G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at um, RAM and pointers and the load effective address command instruction, sorry. So back in the 386 and 486 days they used to use what was called segmented memory and uh, this is where memory is split into different segments. You've got your code segment and your data segment. You use those segment pointers to point all over the place and uh, it's quite confusing. Really good for bewildering onlookers there was different ways of referencing um, the same byte in memory, so each byte had more than one address and uh, everybody was confused for a really long time but <laughs> but thankfully we don't have that anymore uh, nowadays in x64 we use the flat memory model flat memory model and this pretty much means that RAM is for us uh, just a gigantic array starts from low values such as zero, goes all the way through to higher values such as um, four gigabytes if that's how much you've got. Alrighty, so each box in RAM, these are all bytes, this is RAM just here, um, each box in RAM is uh, a single byte and each box has both um, an address and it's also got uh, a number in the box. So maybe in box number five we've got um, 22 alrighty for example and well, what's a pointer? We have to start talking about pointers. So a pointer is um, actually just this number here. It's the box number. Alrighty, it's the address of that value there that we want to look up. How do you use a pointer in, uh, in assembly? Well, it's very simple. RBX, you use 64-bit um, values for pointers. RBX5. There we go. RBX is now a pointer to box number 5. You might notice that that's exactly the same as moving the value 5 into RBX and uh, yeah, that's it. Pointers are just numbers to assembly. So, how do we read the value in um, box number 5 from RAM instead of um, just something like MOV CL um, RBX, which isn't going to work at all because that's a 64-bit register, um, BL. If we MOV CL BL, um, CL is going to get 5 obviously since um, yeah, BL has 5. If you want the value in the RAM box at um, 5 or the, the value in RAM that RBX is pointing to, you have to put square brackets around RBX. There we go, that references memory now. So we're not talking about the value 5, we're talking about the value in the memory box 5. And the value in the memory box 5 is 22, so CL we have 22. Easy as that. Um, I haven't done it here, but I should have. Right here, beside the square brackets, you should put, um, just as a good practice, you should put the size of the memory that you're referencing. Even though CL is a byte and assembly will probably figure it out, um, it's always good to put the byte size as well. So we should have written something like this. Byte PTRRBX. That way there's no confusion between anyone reading your code or the assembler's not going to get confused. Everybody knows you're reading a byte. And um, the sizes that these can take are, um, we've got a byte pointer, we've got a word pointer, a D word pointer, a Q word pointer, XMM word pointer for SSE, and YMM word pointer for AVX. Okay, so that's how we read a value from memory into um, the register CL. If you want it to go the other way, just ignore all this for a bit, um, you've just got to swap the parameters around. So, um, mov byte ptr and we've got rbx, um, let's say 11. This line just here, when it executes, it's going to put 11 in uh, box number 5. So that 22 won't be there anymore. Get out of here, mate. Okay, we have 11 right there. So um, that's really all there is to pointers, or basically, uh, that's all there is to basic pointers. They're just numbers, and you put a square bracket around it. Okay, on the next page, we'll talk about the LEA instruction load effective address. LEA. Load effective address. 
Okay, so when our program runs in um, RAM or Windows loads our program, we've got the data segment and Windows will sort of pick a spot in RAM that's free and it'll say, okay, your program can use this as your data segment. But we don't know what the first box number is. We know that it's our data segment zero. It's the first box of our data segment, but we've got no idea what number that happens to be in RAM. You know, it could be up at 65 million somewhere. It could be anywhere. 4 gig of RAM, it could be anywhere. Um, so if we define a variable right here, we call this um, my word in our data segment by reserving um, two bytes of space right there. Um, all we're saying is that we want to refer to um, the data segment plus one, two, three, four, five, six bytes as my word. Um, I don't, I don't want to call that, for example, maybe what's it going to be? Maybe F F O two A three one. Let's say, for example, that that happens to be the number that Windows has given us. That was the spot in RAM that it thought would be good for our data segment for our running program. Um, I don't want to remember that number as a programmer. I'd rather use this label, my word, to mean that. But um, now we've got a problem. We need to be able to refer to that number. So what do we do? Well, if we want to move that number into a register, we can't do this. Um, let's see, it's a, it's a word, mov cx, my word because as we just said, um, my word is a label, my word means that number so if we move into CX my word uh, it's actually going to move whatever values in here let's say for example there's 148 that would result in CX having 148 since um, yeah, my word is pointing to there what we want to do is um, load this number here the box number of uh, this 148. We don't want to load the 148 and uh, that, my friends, is exactly what the LEA instruction does. LEA RBX my word. Aha! This doesn't load 148 into RBX. Oh no, this loads that. So I think that was supposed to be a zero. RBX would then have O F F O2 dot 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 whatever it is and um, yeah then we can use RBX as a pointer to that box even though we have no clue where in RAM our data segment is sitting isn't that beautiful? okay so how would we use it as a pointer? well let's say mov into oh, let's go CX 20 then we're free to mov a word ptr rbx um, cx okay all I've done here is put the value 20 into cx and then I've moved that value into whatever rbx is pointing at we know from the load effective address instruction that rbx is pointing right there at my word so what's going to happen you guessed it fellas we're going to get a 20 right here exactly like that. Okay. Um, I do want to mention a big difference between C++ pointers and assembly pointers. Okay, this is really important. So in, in C++, if you've got something like int that p equals the address of i, for example, say we've got a variable i de declared somewhere, um, P is its address at the moment, P is a pointer. If we say P++, um, what happens to P? Well, like we said, P is just a number. But C++ is clever enough to know that P is pointing to an integer. So instead of adding 1 to P, um, this actually adds 4. So maybe here's I just here. This is the first of I, and uh, I would be those four. Um, P would start out pointing there, but after this command um, P would then be pointing there. So um, integer arithmetic in C++ takes in, into consideration the size of data that the pointer is pointing to. 
um, and in assembly it doesn't. Uh, assembly doesn't care if you're pointing to an int or a double word or whatever. Um, all of the integer arithmetics in assembly are done on the basis of pointing to um, bytes so that every address is um, addressable, every byte is addressable, sorry. So um, for example if we had, well like we had on the other page, LEA um, RBX my word, even though that's a word, if we say ink RBX um, we know that the ink command is just going to add one to um, RBX so well, if we scrap that and we say that that was actually my word Um, RBX was pointing there to that line. Actually, I should get my little eraser out and make this a bit neater, shall I? Okay, RBX was pointing to my word, and in C++, if you increased a pointer, uh, it would point to the next word. But in assembly, what happens is um, it ends up pointing to the top half of the first word. So that was my word, and it went for four bytes, oh sorry, two bytes, so it was down to there. Um, C++, if you increased it, it would come down to here, but in assembly, it stops right here. So um, if we were then to move word PTR, RBX, and CX, whatever's in CX, I think we had maybe 10 or something before, um, it wouldn't put it in the next word in memory. It had put it starting at the top half of my word, and um, something like this, like that. So that's my word there, those two boxes. And here we've got a 10, half in my word and half in the next word. Does that make sense? Um, I want also to say that there's really nothing stopping us from doing whatever we like with a pointer. So RBX we're using as a pointer here, but um, we're already well aware that you can do many things with RBX. So for example, we could um, add rbx 1000000 add a million to rbx and it'll be pointing all the way down here somewhere at whatever my word was plus a million no worries uh, that might be outside your data segment and be careful because windows is watching and he'll crash you just as soon as look at you um, or you could get really excitable and do something like shl shift left we haven't been through this command yet but it's pretty cool and say 41. Um, shift left RBX is the same as um, multiplying RBX by 2 to the power of 41. So um, RBX already had a million in it, so a million times 2 to the power of 41 is a pretty absurd number. It's going to be way, way down. Uh, you probably haven't got that much RAM. This is going to be terabytes. But um, in assembly you can do exactly that. Or, for example, also, if you're in C++ and you try and do, um, was it, P1 and then OR equals P2, um, C++, if these are both pointers, C++ is going to just say, look, what are you doing, mate? You loser. You can't OR two pointers together. And um, assembly? Assembly couldn't care less. If we have um, two pointers in uh, RBX and RAX, then R, B, X, R, A, X, all them together, and um, off we go. Mov, word, P, T, R, R, B, X, and oh, I'll get this out of the way. Five. And off it'll go. Your program will try and write whatever happened to be the odd bit pattern of those two registers. Um, yeah, it'll try and write that five into that box number. So that's both the beauty and the danger of assembly. There's uh, no rules, nothing stopping you from doing whatever you like, except of course for Windows crashing your program. Okay, well that's about it for pointers and uh, memory. Thank you for listening.